Hello, everybody. Welcome to the council. Welcome back to the council. If you've been here before, I'm Yusuf, and I am being joined by the Horror Hours Utaka. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the council. You've been here a lot. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> um, but today we're here for a very special reason because we are reviewing Marvel Studios' Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yes. I'm so excited. We haven't made an embargo in so long. The last movie. Jack pointed this out was Cherry. <laughs> that was such a shit movie. So I'm so excited that we get to talk about, you know, something good for once. But um, oh. <laughs> yeah, this, in case you don't know, this is the new Marvel movie. It comes out September 3rd. Um, and we got to see it early. So Yutaka, what did you think of this movie? Uh, well, my initial thoughts, I, I, I loved it. I, the trailers didn't do it justice, to be honest. Uh, it was, a, just to see it in IMAX, it was a spectacle. And I thought they did a great job. Um, but yeah, overall, I would have to say for an origin film for Marvel, they did pretty good because typically their origin films, uh, exception of Black Panther at times, um, they're not that great. Yeah. I'd agree. I, I was really looking forward to this movie from the very beginning, because as you know, I'm a huge fan of Simu Liu being a Canadian. Like I, I, I'm so excited. I live literally like across the street from Kim's convenience, like the real one. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Yeah. But I was excited for him. I was excited because the trailers looked dope and I was excited because uh, Desto Daniel Cretton, who's the director did just mercy. And I love mm -hmm. that film. Um, so I was really excited. And um I gotta say this was probably like this and free guy were the best times I had watching a movie because both of them were really the own like the first blockbusters of the year like we had Godzilla versus Kong but that was I watched that at home because movie theaters weren't open at the time Black Widow as much as I love it felt more like a smaller indie film which is why I love it so much but this the good and the bad because there are some problems with this movie that all blockbusters <laughs> yes. fall into but i think that's kind of like the audience reaction seeing it in imax the visual effects the action i think this movie i can go on record we can both go on record to say best action in any marvel movie ever easily i think what do you think it's it's almost the uh, who beats it i I think this is the best martial arts that we've seen action wise. I think the fight choreo was great, but best action. Yeah. I, I still hold winter soldier um, yeah. to my heart, but um, this though. Yes. I think Marvel upped its game. Mm -hmm. They did. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go, go, go. I, I, I was just gonna say they really put effort and I'll be honest. I hated the trailers because of the <laughs> slow-mo. I thought it was used too much in the trailers, not bad in the film. And mm -hmm. um, I, I really do some of the fight scenes, like the the speed and everything. It, would... it was very yeah. well done. Like mm -hmm. the way they mixed traditional martial arts with, you know, the Marvel style of fighting, plus the mm -hmm. way that they shot it. And I'm a huge fan of uh, slow motion. That's probably why I like the trailers, but I think they use that very well in the, in the movie. And if you look, um, they released part of the bus scene, which I think is one of the best scenes in the movie out. And that was just a small part. And like the action is amazing in the film. Um, and part of the reason the action is amazing in the film is because Simu Liu killed the action. I mm -hmm. think he was probably cast solely based on the fact that he could do this action. Like you could tell he put his whole body into it. His uh, Like he put so much effort into it. That's what I love about Marvel Phase 4 with... Black Widow and this is I don't feel like any of them are pulling their punches you really feel like they're no. fighting they're in there Marvel movies in the past have been very performative and very movie like where you can be <laughs> like ah oh, that person didn't punch anybody but here you're like oh Jesus are you okay uh, which I appreciate it but unfortunately and this hurts my heart to say Simu Liu's acting <laughs> was probably the weakest part of the movie in his defense in his defense they gave him a lot of uh, emotional scenes and roles and like situations. And they surrounded him by amazing actors like Aquafina and Tony Lung and the, really the entire cast. So it was really, really tough to kind of stand out with all of those things. 
but his I'll, there were a couple lines where I was like, oh, he could have done another take and done it better. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I, I honestly think um, aside from his physicality, I will say his charisma and the way he um, uh, his interactions with the characters worked perfectly. Mm-hmm. But the line delivery was cringe at times. I was just like, oh, you ruined a really good scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK, but uh, I mean, to his fault, I mean, he's not been I mean, aside from Kim's convenience. He hasn't been in, I mean, this is his first like huge, big blockbuster role. So I am, I was already, I'll be honest, I'm biased when I sat in the theaters because one, I was happy to be in theaters again. (laughs) And I, there was just so much Asian talent on screen. I was just happy for him. And you could tell he, he was trying. So I won't fault some of that, but I agree. It could have been like, let's take another take. Let's, let's, let's. mm." Yeah, I mean, I don't, again, I don't blame him at all. This is his, I mean, he used to do stock photos for $120. So to go from stock photos to Kim's convenience to this is pretty amazing. Um, And yeah, you could tell he really, really wanted to be there. And I think with time, like some of the, let's be real here. Some of the Marvel actors, they're not Daniel Day-Lewis here, right? So I think with- So true. He has the charisma, he has the physicality. That's what matters at this point. I think as time goes on, he will start to get better. Like Brie Larson is a lot better. Um, like for example, in Endgame than she was in Captain Marvel. So I That's don't. True. I I I have hope for him, and he he does have the charisma. He has the looks. He has everything, except for line delivery. Um, <laughs> but who do you think was the best person in the film? Because I okay no let's talk about. <laughs> you Aqu- already first. know that. Let's talk about. I thought Aqu- I was gonna hate her. Um, mm-hmm. she was fantastic. She, yeah. I don't want to spoil anything. I won't. All I'll say is, and you talk of this is spoiler, tell me and I'll cut it out. She's in a lot more of the movie than I had originally thought. Because when I heard that she was just playing Katie, the friend, I thought it was going to be <laughs> like, um, what's her face? Glenn Close in Guardian. She would be there during the beginning of the movie for the bus oh. scene and then fuck off. But she was there for the entire movie and they gave her so yeah. much to do. Uh, she... She helped lighten, I think, certain elements of the film. Um, and same thing. I think she acted circles around Simu or uh, Simu, but yeah. I think they still um, they worked so well together. Their chemistry. Um, I mean, when they got drunk in the beginning, I was dying. <laughs> I was like, I, I believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they seem like good friends. And again, I mean, the reason that she acted circles around, and I wouldn't say acted circles, I'd say it was better because she was in her element. She was doing comedy, which is what she does. She's yes. been doing this for years. Like she has experience. Um, but I think for Aquafina fans, she's not just the comedic relief. Like she is there, she does shit and she's important, which I think is good to know going into the movie. Um, <laughs> but easily the best performance in the movie was Tony Lung easily yes, oh my one gosh. of the best marvel villains ever my I opinion. would um that one i'm gonna agree with i man uh, there's only been a couple times where marvel um uh, with their villains and, and i think a killmonger because you both are rooting for them but you also see where they're wrong mm-hmm. and you're hurting for them like he his performance was just, I'm not going to, well, yeah, I, mean, I was looking, I was like, this is kind of awardsy, but oh, yeah. he's never, I mean, his acting in general is always spot on. Um, I mean, he's also huge in China. I mean, he is like, he's a legend in my eyes. I love a lot of his films. And so yeah. I was, yeah, I was speechless. He, yeah. he had me chuckling. I was like, oh, okay, all right, wow. Yeah, no, he for me personally, I wasn't familiar with Tony Lung. Um, mm-hmm. so it was a it was a nice surprise to see that he did so well. And he is very not I wouldn't say very similar to Killmonger in like story wise. I think performance yeah, not story. very similar. Yes. Because mm-hmm. they gave him a lot of you can a lot of emotional moments and they made him very sympathetic, but like in a very realistic way. Like he's not a caricature, he's not the first Mandarin that we got in Iron Man 3 who was like Tony Stark left me at a party. Oh, I'm going to be a terrorist, you know? 
That's or true. um whip guy who wanted his bird like he actually oh, had oh <laughs> yeah he actually had like a good reason for what he was doing and you understood it but he was just going about it the wrong way but you also understood why he was going about it the wrong mm-hmm. way you know what i mean so i think that's kind of what was so smart about that and the writing and everything before we end <laughs> Um, Charlotte, who is uh, a listener and viewer, we love her. Uh, she DM'd us some questions that we want to answer. And if you guys ever want to ask us questions, interact with us, there's comment section, there's Twitter, all the links are in the description. Um, so we'll just rattle through these really quickly. So um, the first question, actually, you talk, you pointed this out to us and brought us down when we were watching the trailers is uh, <laughs> one of the writers work on Wonder Woman 84 and Mortal Kombat. So mm-hmm. what do you think happened? Was it director interference or studio? Because it sounds like this movie is extremely well made and well written. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I would have to say possibly director interference. I, I, well, I think also, though, there are multiple writers on this film. Yes. Whereas I think he I think there was only maybe one or two writers on Mortal Kombat. I don't think he could carry. The whole I think there was assistance. Yeah. And uh, I'm happy because that that made me nervous. I remember originally talking about that. I was yeah. like, oh, God. Yeah, no, I think this movie is extremely well written and well directed and well made in general because of Marvel. I think Marvel has a very well oiled machine like they're not going to just let you do whatever the fuck you want. Like Warner Brothers does like Warner Brothers used to be very and now mm-hmm. they're very woo. so <laughs> Marvel's right in the middle there. And I think that's why this movie worked out well. Uh, and the last question is, what do you think of Feige hiring directors like Chloe Zhao, Desto Daniel Cretton, and Bassam Tariq, who's doing Blade? Well, let's also not forget Nia DaCosta. Oh, yeah, Nia DaCosta. I mean, all, I'm actually really... excited. Yeah. I, um, I was not sure what to expect with um, uh, Destin, Daniel Cretton, Cretton, Cretton. Oh, God, Cretton. I'm butchering his name. I... I, I I like they're taking risks with the directors. Hmm. Um, I mean, Chloe. Oh, 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 I'm so excited. I know people look at the Eternals trailers and they're like, eh. No one looks at the head. Eternals trailers and go, uh, those are just crazy Okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I was, it looks stunning. Yeah. Um, and so, and I even have to say as much as, like I said, Black Widow was, eh to me it was what it was well made it was well directed i just there were other elements that i just wasn't a fan of and it's not even scar joe i could care less about that <laughs> and yeah. also disney needs to pay look scar joe made know. an appearance in my in my apartment <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah. i and i can't wait to see like I, i'm looking i'm looking forward to i guess you would say like the new blood uh, that they're bringing in versus yeah. ooh, who's doing who did the new spider is that john watts i love john watts don't you dare oh, but yes sorry <laughs> um no i agree i think what's so smart about this is a it gives these directors like a chance to like really grow mm-hmm. quickly as opposed to doing the short films and the, this and <laughs> um Marvel has a very good second unit team that does the action. So you still get the Marvel action spectacle story while also getting the unique director, like indie director style of the beautiful shots and the really intimate performances and stuff like that. So I think Mm -hmm. it's a brilliant mix. I think they found their mojo and they should continue. I'm excited for Nita Costa. I'm excited for Bassam Tariq. I haven't seen Mogul Mowgli, which is the film that made him famous um but I'm, I'm excited for a little bit of a negative um i think the visual effects for the film were a little bit weak i wouldn't say they're weak i'd say they're uneven because there's moments when you're like okay the visual effects are pretty good and then there's moments when you're like this could use some work like Mar- d not dc disney's visual effects department has not been good i'm sorry there's just certain parts I'm like that seems I mean like this is cool I love the action but Mm -hmm. some of that kind of took me out of it uh I thought like the rings were for the most part incredible but there were a few times I'm like yeah I want to tighten that up but yeah 
There were a few moments where the visual effects were weak. And I think it, again, because it's the first real blockbuster of 2020 and free guy, it's, Mm -hmm. um, it falls into the same traps that it usually does with its third act. Like I was really enthusiastic until that third act. There are some cool moments. Don't get me wrong, but it is a very marvelly finale kind of, uh, it's not bad by any means. It's not the worst that they've done, but it's not the best third act that they've done either. Um, but in, in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think unlike Black Widow, this has great connections to the future and to the larger story of the Marvel Universe. Like, mm-hmm. I think we've been waiting. This is going to be the real, again, because it was the best time and the best, the biggest audience reaction, I think partly was because of the Marvel connections that they were able to put in the movie. I'm excited. I think they're, even with Black Widow as well, and and the shows, they're really, they're starting to lay, obviously, the groundwork for a new, a grand new villain. And I kind of hope we at least keep up with the whole spectacle uh, in terms of, I mean, this movie was a feast for the eyes. Oh yeah. I love that. So It was gorgeous. Um... I think this movie is extremely rewatchable if the Delta variant wasn't in play. Like, I think that Black Widow, I, I would go see this again. I love this, but this is a movie that you're going to want to see again and again and again. Like, it has that rewatchability factor. You watched Black Widow three times? I mean, I watched it more, but yeah, I did. Oof, that's rough. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> this one, I, yes, I could watch over and over. Um, there's just so many, you know, they they tied in so many um, elements to Marvel films, but then also just Asian cinema. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I, I love that. Overall, where would you rank this if you had to kind of like blindly rank it right now? Where would you put it in the Marvel Universe ranking? Oh, it's definitely top tier. Uh, I would say top five for me. Top five, yeah. I I think I put it in my top ten somewhere because I think it's definitely better than some of the Marvel origin stories that they've done in the past. But I think it's not as good as some of the like bigger Avengers movies or uh, movies like Winter Soldier and for me personally Black Widow because that's just my style. Um, <laughs> don't roll your eyes. Oh, I I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> So I would put in my top 10. It's definitely really, really good. It's just, there's a couple nitpicks that I would make to just make it amazing. Um, Thank you so much for watching. That was our review of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, It comes out on September 3rd. Tickets are on sale now. I will leave links for the US and for Canada to get your tickets in the description box. And while you're down there, you see this? Look at this. This this is called merch. It's on a shirt, and it's all of us because uh, there's ten hosts. Well, now there's nine because this. One. I was gonna say, but uh, <laughs> we're all on the shirt. That's me in the middle there. Um, it's available now. The link is in the description box. We also have a podcast called The Council with new episodes every Wednesday at nine a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you're sitting there on Tuesday waiting, well, Utaka. Oh, yeah, you could watch our show yeah. and listen to it, The Horror Hour. I couldn't tell you when it drops. George does all that. <laughs> Honestly, it, it Tuesday drops at like important thing. Tuesdays yeah. at like three or four in the morning. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I'm still up, but. It's a spooky time, so it's fine. Ooh. Well, I don't know. This last time we got heated. Oh, okay. It was a good time. What a tease. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, check out both of those shows. Subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell. Um, we will do full coverage. No, we won't. Um, but yeah, if podcasts ain't your thing, also every Saturday we have a video version. So check that out. And thank you to Yutaka for being here. Um, he will make an appearance on the council close to. If you want to talk more Shang Chi, actually, yes. If you want to talk more Shang Chi, uh, the Wednesday before release, we're going to have a very special Shang Chi themed episode of the council with me, Yutaka, and Liam, who's our other host. Yutaka, why do you seem surprised we talked about this? Oh, shit, we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get. Um, yeah, oh, so man, be, sure to, <laughs> be sure to follow the podcast so you can, uh, you can see that. But yeah, we've talked enough. 
go watch shang chi if you feel safe if not watch black widow at home or watch some porn i don't know i don't care don't tell them to watch uh, black widow jesus <laughs> oh wait no watching. dude so that way disney has to give her money okay don't watch black widow <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, wasn't that just tons of fun? Thank you guys so much for watching. Click the pig in the middle to subscribe to this channel. Follow our socials, buy our merch, and check out our podcast, The Council. New episodes every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All of the links are in the description box.